The Modern Warfare 2 Season 1 Reloaded update came around, and while we've been touching on the changes that we've seen since that update, we haven't really had the time to go into our seasonal updates for Warzone, and more specifically, talk about what you should be using in regards to the best weaponry for Warzone. In this one, I'm going to be running down what has changed, what's still dominant, and a few weapons that have snuck their way into what I'd wager is my top 10. As we go along, drop your thoughts below. By no means is this a definitive list, so the nice part about the meta right now is that it's relatively healthy outside of a solidified few weapons, so if you have a weapon you build that you think you can fry with, drop it below for the community. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. We're on that road to 600,000 subscribers, so if you'd like to join us, I'd love to have you. And finally, today's video is brought to you in part by my friends over at Apex Gaming PCs, but more on that in a bit. For now, let's talk about the best loadouts you should be using in Warzone 2. Now, firstly, as of this update, surprisingly, we didn't get a whole ton of weapons tuned across Modern Warfare 2 and also Warzone 2. For whatever reason, a lot of the weapons were relatively untouched, and the only ones in terms of what you may have encountered in Warzone that really were affected were the Akimbo pistols and the 74U minimally. So truthfully, there's still a lot of standouts here that you may recognize. But for reference, while we talked about those Akimbo pistols being adjusted, strangely, the X13 autos were not. So you can still run those Akimbo, and that's one that we'll talk about here at the very end as a secondary that I run on basically all of my classes. The way that we end up, of course, having loadouts in Warzone, overkill really isn't as necessary because either you're buying one weapon at a time at a buy station or you can end up getting one with relative ease if you pick up and load out from either the drop or from a stronghold. So that's one that I'll just keep on my person for close quarters. But if I have the opportunity to get something better, I'll trade it out for something better. But starting out with the weapons themselves, well, the biggest one that I think is still the main meta here is the RPK. The RPK, it's got power, it's got control, it's got 75 rounds at its base, and it's one that honestly is incredibly easy to control while you end up kitting it out. To save the monotony, here of this loadout as well as the ones to follow. I'm not going to verbally list off every single tuned attachment here that we end up using, but you will see them on screen on a new overlay that we set up here. So hopefully that can help you out, but we're not going to ramble off every single number here as we go along, but it will be there for you if you want to take a look at it. For me, I run the SC SRO 7 Optic. Again, this one that when you place it to the far eye position, it's very easy to control. It offers that sort of visual recoil control as well, but offers just enough magnification where you get something out of it as a benefit fit for range, but it's not something that is just a red dot sight or so. Beyond that, I'll run the TAC 597 barrel for that added damage range, movement speed, and bullet velocity. I'll run the Polar Fire S for that sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness for the least amount of trade-offs. Then I'll end up including the FTAC Ripper for the aiming idle stability, hip fire accuracy, and recoil stabilization. And finally, the Demo X2 grip for additional recoil control. You throw all that together and you have one that is absolutely something that will beam players over distance, and it's very easy to control, good ammo capacity, you can take on multiple engagements with this. Beyond that, my next favorite weapon is the TAC-56. This one is honestly one of my favorite ones for mid-range to even as of recently long range, as crazy as that sounds, especially when we look at the builds themselves, because this I'll end up running no optic on it. I'll run that iron sight because it's not bad whatsoever. So for that, I'll end up also running the 17.5 inch Tundra Pro Barrel, offering up more damage range and bullet velocity. The Echoless 80, again, for that sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness with the least amount of drawbacks. I'll end up running the high velocity rounds for extra bullet velocity. I'll run the 60 round magazine and the FSS combat grip for additional recoil control. Now, notably, again, we don't have an underbarrel. We don't have an optic. Two things that are usually pretty standard on our loadout builds here, but honestly, this thing is incredibly easy to control when kitted out. It's a laser pointer, and it's honestly not hard to track enemies the way the iron sights are. So if you're not challenging something over a super long distance or maybe even you could try because it is so easy to control, it is one that will absolutely do well for you. Beyond that, another LMG in no particular order, this is just one that was next on my creative class list, is the RAL MG. Now the RAL is of course one of the highest damage, if not the highest damage per round weapon within all of Warzone, though we will talk about another weapon that is honestly phenomenal here after this one, but if you can get over the recoil of it, you can control that, and also you can deal with the slower rate of fire, you're going to be doing a ton of damage to your enemies. For this, I'd run of course the SZ SRO 7 optic, the 21 inch EXF Rhino barrel for that extra recoil control and bullet velocity. While you can end up running the Golf 16 barrel for additional hip recoil control, you sacrifice more in those trade offs. So for me, it's the EXF Rhino barrel, then the Talon 16 barrel for the sound suppression, bullet velocity, recoil smoothness, and recoil control. And while this one takes away more in cons, it is something that you want as much recoil control as possible. So that's where that extra trade off comes in because it offers a bit more up in that regard. 
Then I'll run the 338 mag high velocity ammo for that extra bullet velocity and the Stip 40 grip for extra added recoil control. Honestly, a great one to play around with. Again, just a little bit slower, perhaps. The next we'll run is akin to the TAC 56, but offers more damage, but for more recoil. So it's a bit of that trade off, kind of how, like in Modern Warfare 2019, you had things like the Odin that was just ridiculous in recoil, but it packed insane amount of damage into each round. But then you had things like the Growl, which didn't have the greatest damage profile, or at least after it was adjusted, but it was easy to control. It's one of those trade offs here where the TAC is going to be tougher to control, but offer more damage. For this, I'd run the Cronin Mini Pro Optic, and we'll talk about how you can interchange this in just a second. It's more so preference based. The ZLR Talon 5 for, again, that added sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness, offering a bit more recoil control in that aspect than the Polar Fire S. The FTAC Ripper for, again, more stabilization and stability. The 50 round drum mag for that added ammo capacity. And the FSS Combat Grip for added recoil control. Now, if you like the iron sights, you very well can end up sacrificing that optic and opting for a little bit more control in, say, the Tactique Brute Stock, offering more aiming stability and recoil control, but that's entirely preference based up to you. And then finally, before we round into the second half of the loadouts, the Fennec is the first one we'll talk about for our close quarters engagements. This is still a weapon that will dominate close quarters. So if you want something for CQB, you want something to clear buildings, you cannot go wrong with this one. For this, I'd run the VLK Laser 7 milliwatt for that added ADS speed and sprint to fire speed, the Fennec Covert Force Barrel for that added damage range and bullet velocity, but also the integrated suppressor with it. After that, the Merc Foregrip for hip fire accuracy, recoil steadiness, hip recoil control, and aim walking steadiness, the 45 round magazine because ammo is your enemy here with this one you're going to burn through that so as much as possible is definitely preferred and then the fennec rubber grip for that added sprint to fire and ads speed now before we move over into the final five weapons here on deck let's take a quick second and let you know about my friends and today's sponsor over at apex gaming pcs a performance-based build company that has a great deal with code espresso going on right now following the holiday sales you can still pick up a few good deals saving a few hundred dollars if you're looking to upgrade any hardware or get something for yourself or the gamer you know that's looking for an upgrade linked below are a line of three baseline pcs they've built out for the community though all of which can be fully customized but if you're interested code espresso can save you a few hundred bucks off your entire order so check them out in the link in the description below but for now back to those final five weapon builds now we talked a lot about the medium range here and what i'd prefer to that but we started to get into that close quarter stuff the fennec is phenomenal but beyond that i'd also recommend the vaznev another very fun one very mobile and something that can while not pack as much punch in terms of damage as like a rifle or something like that it's very easy to control has a relatively balanced damage output and can do very well for you for this i'd run the sa response three barrel for that bullet velocity damage range and recoil control the x10 rr R40 suppressor for that sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness. The 45 round magazine, because again, ammunition can unfortunately be your enemy, and that is the best we end up having for ammunition with this weapon and the magazine upgrades. The True Tack grip for sprint to fire and ADS speed, and then the Markiev R7 stock for that sprint speed and aim down sight speed. Another great SMG in that category for close range combat is the MP5, or rather, Lockman Sub. Another one that you cannot go wrong with, but for this, I'd recommend the VLK Laser 7 milliwatt for that added aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed. Unfortunately, enemies can see your lasers on that. If you want to opt out of that, you can go with the 1 milliwatt quick fire laser, but that doesn't give you that sprint to fire speed. The FTAC M Sub 12 is what I'd run for the barrel, offering damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. The X10 RR40 suppressor is what I'd run for that muzzle. The 50 round drum mag and then of course the lm stockless mod for that sprint to fire movement speed and aim down sight speed to round everything out we'll talk about two final primaries one of which though i use as an smg for close quarters but it is a rifle build that being the cast off 74u for this i'd run the short tack 330 millimeter barrel for the bullet velocity and recoil control but again this isn't something that is too favorable outside of like 25 30 meters at most, so playing the close quarters with it, you're going to get a nice little bonus here out of the 330. The Echoless 80 for that sound suppression, damage range, and bullet velocity, giving you as best a chance if you need to to go into medium range. The 45 round magazine, the True Tack Grip for that sprint to fire and aim down sight speed, and the Markiev R7 stock again for sprint speed and aim down sight speed. This packs the power of a rifle in the mobility of an SMG, so it's a very nice hybrid weapon, I think, if you want to go sniper support, or like me, I've honestly been going double rifle 
similar like an LMG and a rifle here for this at some points when I use this. So very helpful, can do very well for you, but definitely try that one out. And finally, in terms of the rifle category, we're going to talk about the Kastov 762. This one has kind of fallen out of one of my favorites to use, but it is still very good and easy to use in terms of that medium range play. I've just kind of favored other weapons at medium to long range because they can do more at a distance. So for this, I'd run the Cronin Mini Pro, the Cast 10 584 millimeter barrel, again, for that damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. The Polar Fire S4, as always, the same sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness. The FTAC Ripper for the attributes that we've discussed already, and then the 40 round magazine as well. Unfortunately, again, the max you'll end up seeing in terms of that rifle magazine. So still a very viable option. It's just kind of fallen out of some of my favorites here to use in regards to the best for medium to long range. Now, that is nine out of 10 weapons. So the 10th out of 10 that we'll talk about is again, coming back to that Akimbo, the X13 that I just kind of run on every single class, just so if I need to, I can absolutely clear a building and clear enemies out with those autos. But if I want to swap to something that I get out of a buy station, or if I find another loadout, either drop or come across a stronghold, I can do that and upgrade from those pistols. But for that, I'd end up running the X10 sidearm L400 laser, that offering hip fire accuracy and recoil control. You do not have to focus at all about aim down sight speed, obviously, because you are running a Kimbo, you're not going to ADS in on that. The XRK Sidewinder 6 slide for the recoil control and bullet velocity. The Forge DX90 Fs for sound suppression, bullet velocity, and recoil smoothness. The 33 round magazine, because 24, you'll burn through that really quickly, but a 50 round drum mag, it will end up hindering that movement speed and sprint to fire speed a little too much. I found the 33 round is just about right where you want it to be. And then, of course, the Akimbo X13 for that rear grip is the thing that caps it all off. But that is my pick here for the top 10 loadouts within Warzone as of right now. I've been having a blast with all of these, so feel free to try them out. And again, if these don't necessarily line up to be your cup of tea, that's totally fine. Let me know what you guys think would be the top 10 down below. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.